Hello, kia ora and bonjour to our viewers across New Caledonia, New Zealand and Vanuatu. I'm Philip Duncan as we track Cyclone Ruby. It was named yesterday by the Australian Bureau of Meteorology and already today it's Category 2 and may well get up to severe Category 3 status tonight. This is it in the Coral Sea with the infrared satellite getting better organised and what that means is it starts to get more of a shape that actually looks like a tropical cyclone. So this is the current tracking. If you're just a bit confused about where it actually is right now, way up here in the Coral Sea, Category 2. What this shows are the two different models that we sort of trust the most for storms like this. We've got the Australian model in there with the numbers and the silver line, and then the pink line with the pink circles, that's the Joint Typhoon Warning Center from the US, and they do global storms, so we use them for all of our storms. So this is the one to track, the one with the numbers, and the good news is they are both aligned. So that is really good news. That means there's a lot of consistency with the computer modeling about where the storm is going to go. But here's the unusual part for New Zealand. We're actually going to get very heavy rain connected to the cyclone arriving two full days before the storm even gets close to us. So that's why New Zealanders need to pay close attention. But for now, it's all about Nouvelle Caledonia. This is where the cyclone is coming in. It is directly going to impact New Caledonia and potentially the island south here of Vanuatu. So on the animated wind map, this is an interesting map because it shows you the low pressure zones in the dark blue purple colouring and then the high pressure zones in the brighter yellows and whites. So a lot of high pressure around the New Zealand area at the moment. But for those who've been reading our news updates at weatherwatch.co.nz over the weekend, we were writing stories about these lows in the Tasman because what they're doing is siphoning away the energy from that cyclone. You can sort of see they're joining up and the more they do that, the uh, lower the chances are that this storm gets even more powerful because it's taking away some of its energy. What it's also doing is transferring the rain from up here in the tropics to right down here into the Tasman Sea. And that's the reason why we're going to be in New Zealand impacted by heavy rain two days before this cyclone even comes down uh, towards the eastern side of the North Island. So this is the setup for Tuesday and you can see them all linking up these low pressure zones. We've got one, two, three. Here is the cyclone smack bang over the top of Nouvelle Caledonie. So for those of you who are watching there, please stay up to date with Meteo France and we'll be doing updates as well at weatherwatch.co.nz. But you can see the tropical airflow from right up here in the Solomon Islands all the way down past Vanuatu and straight into New Zealand's North Island, but also right down to Southland and Fiordland. You won't get the rain down there, but you'll get the warmth and the humidity from that northerly flow from out of the tropics. And as these uh, systems combine, the rain, which we've seen a lot of in the Upper North Island recently, will spread further afield, drizzle, dry spells, and downpours, the three Ds. Now by Wednesday, that's when the bulk of that rain is moving through, but the tropical cyclones up here just leaving New Caledonia and Vanuatu. So it's uh, au revoir to them, but then it comes down towards New Zealand. And here's, again, the interesting feature is that the cyclone's a long way away. The rain, though, is connected up. And so this is the feature, this atmospheric river, which is a very narrow area of heavy rain coming from a long way off like the tropics and being fed straight in. So Bay of Plenty, East Cape, Coromandel, they've all got flood risks, really, as we go through the next few days. Rainfall totals could be well over 150 millimetres, getting up over 200, maybe even closer to 300 in some localised spots up in the mountains and ranges. We'll be waiting for Met Service to be issuing the rain warnings for this system. And as you can see, rain pushes down on Wednesday into the South Island as well. Canterbury, uh, warmer, but you've still got rain on the way as your wet summer continues on. Now by Thursday, this is where it gets a little strange. The cyclone just off the coast here, this is what the modeling is consistently saying it will do. But look how small it is compared to the low that's forming and growing down around the South Island as this one steals the energy from the cyclone. Now you still don't want to be hit by that. It's basically like a big sort of tornado in some ways. I mean, it's got solid damaging winds just wrapped around the middle and then it's pretty much dry straight behind it. So this is one you don't want to be coming in and clipping East Cape or any part of New Zealand. We want it to stay out at sea. We don't want those big strong winds. The rain, we can probably take most of that, although like I say, there could be some flooding around the North Island over the next couple of days as this all moves through. And by Friday, 
the cyclone's gone completely. It's all absorbed now into that one big low, which is past the Chatham Islands and drifting away from us. So that is the end of it. Uh, still a bit of a tropical connection up here, another weak low behind it, but that one is not expected to do anything. And here's the good news. For those of you who are sick of the humidity in New Zealand, there's a southwester coming through on Friday. It'll be much cooler on Friday nationwide, especially in Southland. But those in Auckland and Bay of Plenty, Waikato and Northland who have had humidity for two and a half weeks, it finally takes a break at the end of this week. And by the time we get to Saturday, light southerlies, high pressure coming in, it'll feel quite different. It really will. The overnight temperatures will be dropping down a wee bit as well. But look, here's the next thing, the red line here, measuring air thickness. This is showing a big burst of tropical heat coming into Australia. Cooper Pedy, which is on the railway tracks up to Alice Springs in the desert, Got a high of about 43 degrees at the end of this week. Hot weather spreading down into Adelaide and Melbourne. And I'm sharing this with you because New Zealand has a cool change at the end of the week, but it's followed by this big high. Hopefully, we're going to have some more settled weather coming in around Christmas time. Okay, so that is it for now. For those of you in Nouvelle Caledonie, New Caledonia, please do take extreme care. Keep up to date with Meteo France. That is obviously the official forecaster uh, for New Caledonia. It's also in French as well. So you don't have to deal with it in parlez-vous anglais. <laughs> do you speak English? I hope so, because I've been speaking that the whole way through. That is all from me. We'll see you tomorrow with our next update. For those in New Caledonia, please do take extreme care. The storm looks like a direct hit coming in tonight and across Tuesday.